Welcome to the Water Cooler Hangout Podcast. I'm your host, Bob Poole. For over 45 years, I've been helping sales and marketing leaders and entrepreneurs grow and prosper by creating extraordinary experiences for their customers. Here at the Water Cooler Hangout, we chat with influential and successful guests who share their real life stories about their careers and companies. Their successes, failures, and stories will resonate with you and leave you wanting to hear more. We'll learn how all of us are connected and how we share the same kind of challenges, fears, wants, needs, and dreams. My sincerest desire is that you hear something today that helps you create the job, the business, and the life you want and deserve. Hi, everyone. Bob Poole here. My guest today is Jeff Grice. Jeff is a senior account executive with Veloxi IO, which is in the artificial intelligence sales assistant software world. They're headquartered up in the uh, Buffalo Niagara Falls area. Jeff is going to give us his insight and best practices on sales AI, sales enablement, sales engagement, and even some email subject lines. He's also going to enlighten me about the AI world as I don't know much about it as it relates to sales. And what I do know about it, I'm not sure I like. There's also a rumor he's also the owner of an NBA championship ring, which we may have to touch upon. So welcome to the Water Cooler Hangout, Jeff. Thank you very much, Bob. I appreciate you having me. It's good. I'm glad you're here. So what do we talk about first, the ring or the... or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can talk about the ring quickly. Sure, it's, uh, let's hear about the ring. One of the, the bright ring. spots of my time in Detroit when I worked for the Detroit Pistons for 13 seasons. When I first started back in 98, there was a work stoppage and got off to a rocky start, but then the team quickly rebounded and made six straight conference finals. And one of those ended up resulting in an NBA championship against the Lakers while I was there. So I have an NBA championship ring to, to show for my time there, which I'm very grateful for. Ah, good stuff. You know, I'm not a uh, NBA fan. I grew up outside of Pittsburgh and we don't have a team there. <laughs> so at least in years, we haven't had a team there. So I've only been to one NBA game in my life, even though I live now in uh, Philadelphia. And that was, believe it or not, in Detroit. Is that right? Yeah. (laughs) I was there and a friend uh, had tickets and took me to it. And it was enjoyable. So it was something new for me. So tell me about AI for sales. What does that mean these days? Yeah. So AI for sales means having more intelligent follow-ups and just having better engagement with your prospects and your clients. So When I talk to salespeople today, they say, Jeff, I feel like I have sales ADD. You know, I'm bouncing around from place to place. I'm looking for more focus and more organization. So sales AI can help with that. Other people say they want to be more consistent. As we all know, consistency is how you win in sales. And it's important to know, to remember to have fun, which I the acronym for that is, you know, fundamental understanding of numbers. And the fundamental understanding of numbers, I think, starts with knowing what your key metrics are on a daily basis. And sales AI or having an assistant that works alongside you can definitely help you hit your daily metrics as well. So do you compete with or do you work with your sales leader kind of software that's out there? Like Salesforce, for instance. Yeah, exactly. So we are an AI integration with Salesforce, which is the beauty of it. So it just sits right on top of it and it works perfectly in sync with Salesforce. So it's wonderful because It allows you to do more and to do better. So what I mean by that, it allows you to reach out to people at the right time. I'll give a quick story. I was actually grabbing some dinner with my family at a Five Guys recently, and I was waiting in the carryout line. And while I was waiting for my dinner for my family, all of a sudden I had an alert on my iPhone. It said, hey, Jeff, your friend Andrew from Xerox is right down the street from you. You should reach out to him. So I would have never thought of reaching out to Andrew in, in that moment, but the sales AI provided that kind of intelligence based on the geo intelligence that's built into the platform. So is that a little scary for some people? Sure. Now, when I shared that with some folks, they're like, wow, was Andrew actually in the restaurant with you? And the answer was no. So it doesn't get that granular. But again, it's just nudging you and it's giving you some prompts based on history, sales activity, and maybe some geo intelligence as well. I think I just recently read in a uh, blog from Mark Schaefer, who's a uh, marketing author. He's written about six bestsellers, I think, at this point. He said that his wife was looking for a particular shirt that he, you know, was a different kind of shirt for him Mm -hmm. and a special color. He never looked it up, but he said a few days later on his his phone or in something that he was looking at, 
one of those shirts popped up. And he's like, how's that possible? You know, I mean, he, he knows how it's possible. He's a marketing guy, but right. but I think people will find that a little intrusive and a lot of people are trying to stop it. I mean, they get things like ad blockers and stuff like that, right? So how do you guys look at that? I mean. Yeah, so our application is a little different in the sense that we're a true integration with Salesforce. And what I mean by that is we're more about cutting down on the non-selling activities that reps have to deal with on a day-to-day basis. Everyone hates the annoying non-selling activity they have to handle with the administrative stuff, like maybe updating spreadsheets or logging sales calls into Salesforce. And nobody wants to spend time doing that as a salesperson. They want to continue to have quality conversations to set meetings and to, to close more deals. So we help with that because with our application, every activity you take, whether it's a phone call, whether it's an email, whether it's a text message, is all automatically logged into Salesforce for you. So our clients absolutely love the service because it streamlines their process on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, I was talking with someone the other day and we were talking about the fact that sales is about, you know, 80 to 90 percent time not selling. I mean, you spend all that time not actually face-to-face or, you know, closing or working with the uh, prospect or client. So your software helps that in terms of exactly how I'm trying to still want to see how that works. Yeah, again, it's automatically logging all of your activity throughout the day. Okay. So for example, I talked to somebody who was in legal services last week and she said, Jeff, I get, understand what you're saying because I was out in the golf course. She was sharing with me last week and as she was having her round of golf, she took several phone calls from clients or prospects, right? And she, she knew some of those conversations, it was important for her to notate or to keep notes on them about what they talked about, what time of day it was, and et cetera. But she had no record of it because it was off of her, her cell phone and she didn't have a way to log that. With our app, with our mobile app through Veloxy, if she had taken that call from her phone to a client, it would have logged when it happened, the duration of the call, and then she could have done some voice dictation really quickly from her golf cart and made a note of what the call was about, and it would have been logged automatically into Salesforce for her. Oh, excellent. That's great. Okay. Yeah, I can see, definitely see where I could even use that. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So you're not really the AI kind of thing then where we have to worry about what shirt our wife is looking at. (laughs) A little bit different. So and then that's I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people believe maybe AI is going to replace jobs or whatever else. In fact, at least in the sales space, what we found is because it's creating more opportunity to actually for salespeople to do what they were hired to do, which is to make sales and to have conversations, that's creating better sales productivity which then leads to more hiring because, you know, everything is running more smoothly. So again, if you decrease non-selling activity, it'll increase the sales productivity and then it allows for opportunities to maybe expand on the sales team moving forward. So how does Veloxy work with like your typical CRM? It's a smooth synchronization, very little. There's no IT lift really involved. Uh, The way our app works is you log into your Salesforce and just that authentication, which you do every single day, logs you into the app and then you're good to go. So we actually have a a five-star rated app exchange with our sales app through the Salesforce app store. So what about something like active campaign where your, you know, your Salesforce or your, excuse me, your email management, do you have integration there or with, with, uh, yeah, yeah. all this stuff that you would expect to find, you would have through Veloxy for email campaigning. You could do templates, you can run campaigns. And then we have a very robust data set for, email analytics as well. Okay. So you can do the analytics on the back end after that's actually might be pretty good. There's some tools out there that just don't have the analytics that I'd like to see. Yeah. So for example, I had someone in the telecom space recently asked for some information and shared it with them. They had to share it with their buying decision teams. So we shared it out, I think with six or seven different people across five or six different states. And I had, I had clarity into all of that activity from my end, and it, you know, they don't know what's going on, but we can see everything that's being shared, which is nice. And it just helps you, again, have more intelligent follow-ups about what the next steps are in the sales process. So is this typically used by inside salespeople or outside or both? Both. Both? Definitely stronger with field because of the mobile piece, which is new, mm-hmm. but uh, inside reps can use it as well. So how do you find, you know, do they use it? Is it a tool that they use? Because I can think back to the beginning of Salesforce and stuff like that, that, you know, it all looks good, but trying to get the typical salesperson to actually use them. (laughs) Yeah, no, absolutely. And adoption is actually on the rise with a tool like ours, because I talked to somebody who was in uh, medical sales 
And he said, Jeff, using Veloxy makes using Salesforce an absolute joy, which, you know, I, I smiled at because, yeah, if he's used in the past too, a lot of times salespeople don't want to have to toil around with their CRM. But if you can have something that makes it seamless where they're just using it and they don't have to do all the manual stuff, then it is turns into be a joy because your future self will thank you for all the hard work you've been doing as far as keeping tabs on all of your activity and your conversations. Well, that's great. It's always been an issue with clients of mine, even with me, <laughs> you know, I, I would, I had good intentions, you know, but then, right. you know, you're a month down your road and you're saying, ah, oh, I don't think I put that in there. I didn't enter this, you know, so. Well, that goes back to the consistency piece of it, right? So I think, I believe I heard on some of your previous podcasts that you used to sell copiers. Is that correct? Yes, I did. Yeah. So I worked for a Xerox <laughs> company for a short stint and I thought about, I would have loved to have had this tool at that time, because at the end of the day, when I was working for the Xerox company, I was literally going door to door, you know, offering services and copiers. And I'd come back to the office at the end of the day and I would have to sit down for an hour, maybe two, and input all of my information from that day's activity into the CRM. And it was just a huge time suck. Yeah. Well, when I first started selling them, it was, uh, we were using paper, you know, and, and, and <laughs> index cards. I remember uh, 3M, that's who I worked for. They put me through a sales training program and said, here's some DRB or whatever cards, I guess they called them back then. And they said, uh, done in Bradstreet cards. And they said, uh, here's your territory and uh, start at A, <laughs> you know, and start making phone calls and knocking on doors. I can remember being in Pittsburgh and going into an office building and walking in one place. And uh, as I walked in, the receptionist looked up at me and said, we don't need any copiers. And I'm like looking around, <laughs> is there a sign? You know, did someone stick a sign on me in my back or something? And call me when it's broke, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's a tough time. So yeah, I mean, having something that would allow you not to spend so much time prospecting and getting good information. And it's, it's certainly come a long way in all those years. I mean, I started selling copiers in the 70s, so it was against Xerox, you know. Well, yeah, with regards to down on Bradstreet and list, like every company has a method for doing that, right? For building up their list and stuff. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about our platform, Bob, is if you were out in the field in that situation and you're going door to door or strip mall to strip mall or, you know, business to business with our geo intelligence, you can pull up our app on your phone and it'll tell you what our good qualified leads around you with a tap of a button, you could enter them into your Salesforce instance and start calling or or reaching out to them right then and there, which is amazing. So when I was at a previous software company, I would have to manually input leads and I timed myself because it was so frustrating to me. It would literally take me four minutes per lead to input something. With Loxy, you can do it in 30 seconds. Oh, wow. That does save some time. So how do you guys work with sales development and the people that are doing mostly the inside kind of stuff? Is, that, uh, is there any interface in there with people that have sales development software? Software as a service, mostly I'm thinking about. Sure. There's so many different applications you could use it for. It's really just a communication tool. So, I mean, if you already had a sales development team in place and they were passing off leads, yeah, this would work well for the account executive to make sure they were having timely follow-ups with their, their opportunities, but also find out maybe folks that they hadn't spoken to in a while. The platform gives them nudges, you know, if it's been past a certain amount of time, whether it's 30, 45 days, et cetera just like you'd see in Salesforce, but it's actionable, right? Mm -hmm. So I, what I love about the app is every day I take a break for lunch and I come back and I can pull up the app and they'll tell me all my red boxes, which means these are folks you should reach out to because it's been a, been a bit of time. So you should reach out to them, which is it's a nice reminder to have and be able to do it right there on the spot and of knowing in the back of your mind that everything's being tracked for. So hearing this, I could actually be talking to a client or be in a location with a, a client. So I'm back on the road again and right. uh when, when we can do that so yes. i'm in pittsburgh i'm in philadelphia now but i went to pittsburgh so you're saying that while i'm there would you do this ahead of time that veloxi would give me information and say you should call on these people also and here's why i mean is it is it that granular it'll go two things you could do one you could do a, a geo campaign mm -hmm. email campaign you could put in a, a zip code or a business and you could do a campaign around that if you knew where you're going in advance or if you want to do it in real time, say you, you get out of the car, if you land there, if you're flying, you would, you would just pull up your phone and based on the geo intelligence, it would tell you based on IP addresses, like who you should be speaking with, correct? Wow. Nice. Nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so where's the industry headed? You know, according to McKinsey Global Survey recently, it said 50% of companies have adopted AI in at least one business function. So 
I think sales is probably an early adopter, obviously, and I think it's just going to keep evolving. So it's going to be exciting to see where it, where it ends up. Your company, uh, it's headquartered up there now. Do you write your own software there? Are you the developers on this? Yeah, our company is actually based out of Silicon Valley. So we're out of San Francisco. Oh, okay. um, yeah, I work remote out of Buffalo. So all of our develop, yeah, our team is out of uh, California. All right. Well, tell me a little bit more about the company itself then. I, mean, I don't know anything about your team. Yeah. So we've got a couple of co-founders. We've been around for a handful of years now. And, you know, we work with a lot of telecom companies, HR companies, financial services, a lot of organizations like you alluded to that have outside teams that are looking to uh, stay on top of things and just accelerate their sales processes. And, you know, in this virtual environment we're all in now, it's it's been a lot different, right? Sales cycles have expanded. They're taking longer because it's been virtual. It may continue to be that for a while because from what I'm hearing, even though people are being allowed to go back out on the road, sometimes the buyer doesn't necessarily want someone showing up with a bag and a laptop right. to give a presentation. So, you know, I kind of go back to this 73855 rule, which is really interesting. You know, 7% of the way we communicate is by the words we speak. 38% is the tone that we present them in. And 55 is our body language, mm-hmm. right? So it's amazing to think that 93% of the way we communicate is, is nonverbal. Yeah. 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 I've been hearing that for years. And I wonder, I've been asking people what's happening out there since the pandemic in sales. I mean, you know, I haven't talked to a lot of people who were on the road those that were, well, they're just doing, you know, what we're doing right now. They're still doing the Zoom thing, but they're itching to get back out. Right. But you're right. My wife, the office building she's in and, and some of her clients, in fact, they gave up their space. A lot of people just gave up the space and said, you know, we're going to, in one case, it was they had like uh, two floors of a building and they gave up one whole floor and said, we're just going to uh, virtual and, and kind of rotate people in and out. So you'll be in the office Kind of like the schools are doing, I guess, that, you know, you'll be in the office one or two days a week and at home the other time. Does that go into your planning or does that affect you guys or is it a good thing for you guys? I mean, that more virtual. I think it's going to be better for us once things open back up and you know, people are back on the road and, you know, traveling through airports and stuff like that. That'll help us out more. Especially with the geo thing, right? Correct. And the mobile piece is really you know, it's a big differentiator for us. So we have a three-in-one solution, meaning that we work with a, a web portal. We can live in your inbox if you're using Gmail or, or Outlook, but also the, the mobile piece is definitely a big differentiator for us. So who, who are your competitors? We can mention the name or two. <laughs> sure. I mean, it all depends. There's The sales engagement space is very big. So uh, what I will say, though, is on average, salespeople are using six different tools. Yeah. And, you know, what if you could cut that in half, right? So I think when you ask, where do you think AI is going to help moving forward? I think it's going to help cut down maybe on that tech stack a little bit where, again, salespeople are pulled in so many different directions. They just want things to be streamlined and simpler so they can keep their job, keep it super simple, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard enough talking to to strangers. And if you're cold calling or making prospecting calls, you know, you want to really keep your process simple. No, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, usually that's what happens is that sales reps tend to, in the heat of the battle, as you might say, they just revert to what they know, which is, you know, why a lot of sales training that's out there telling people, you know, here's techniques to use. They just don't work because people are going to go back unless they have something that's kind of based on their own principles and their own inside themselves, you know, they won't buy it. The sales reps won't. And that's kind of what happened to a lot of the, even Salesforce, as far as I'm concerned, when it started, you know, that was tough. I mean, it was to get anyone to buy into that. So do they have any competitors today, though? Who's that, Veloxy? No, Salesforce. Oh, Salesforce? Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, we yeah. all know who the big player is, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're, they're number one number one in the, the SaaS space for a reason. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been using Salesforce since 99 when it first came out, Bob, and I've never seen anything like this mobile app that we have today, which I just tell, encourage people to take a look. That's what's exciting about it. And shoot, you know, sales, all sales is really is 90% of sales is being excited. Yeah. So you can be excited about something. I mean, it's the natural transfer of enthusiasm. I remember Brian Tracy sharing that when I first got started yeah. way back in the day. And it just really resonated with me. So. Yes. Brian Tracy. And he's still out there doing it. Right. <laughs> yeah. All this kind of guys that, uh, and I did that for a while on the road, you know, the, the speaking that's tough, but the, you know, the pandemic really kind of shut them down. A lot of them just took it online though. That's you know what they, yeah. they have to do. So how do people get to know Veloxy better? Do you guys have a trial kind of thing or what do you do? Yeah, they can go to Veloxy, that's V-E-L-O-X-Y dot I-O 
forward slash free hyphen trial. Again, veloxy.io forward slash free hyphen trial, and they can check us out there. Okay. And I'm just curious, you know, I'm putting you on the spot here again. So from a price standpoint, is Veloxy something, you, is this like a monthly fee or is it a one, you know, you pay annually or what, what uh, how do you guys sell it? Yeah, we have two options. You could go month to month, which is only $65 a month, or you could do um, an annual subscription. If you did an annual subscription, we'd knock it down to $49. So it's incredibly affordable. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. <laughs> Probably underpriced. So if you like it, I would get it now <laughs> is what I would say to get grandfathered in before we start adding even more technology to it because we're just getting started. And so where's the company headed? What you guys going to uh, remain private or, or are you going to try to be acquired or you know, like all the other? It's a great question. I'll have to say that one for my, my founders, but um, yeah, we have some big, definitely we have some big goals and aspirations moving forward. So that'll, it's definitely one of the big, big questions in the room. Well, good luck. I'm going to try to, uh, maybe I'll give this a trial myself just to uh, see what happens and we'll have to get together again and find out what Bob found out. <laughs> Bring the old guy up to speed here, you know. I would love that. I'd love to get your feedback on it. Okay. Well, thank you for being here today, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me, Bob. And do you have any questions you want to ask me? I, ask, I usually let people ask questions if they want. Well, I'm curious, which Pistons game did you see? And who, who was that? Was that the Isaiah Thomas or the Bob Lanier game? Yeah, uh, that, was, that was the Thomas time, I think. Yeah. And that was, uh, you know, I'm trying to remember. No, it was, what's Lambeer? Lambeer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He played. I just remember the guy was an animal. I mean, <laughs> I mean he was just, he was as bad as they said, you know. And uh, yeah, I saw you went to college in uh, in Ohio, right? Kent State. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Lambeer was uh, down at the Cavaliers for a while before he made it to Detroit. Anything else you want to ask? You know, I'd love to understand a little bit more about your background, just with your sales experience and like what tools you mentioned, the index cards and everything else. How did you kind of progress throughout your career? Like, where did it end up? Well, you know, it's funny. We had a, I, I tried to explain this to someone a while back and she kind of knew what I was talking about. We actually started off with index cards. That was, you know, that was what we started in sales. And I guess I really started in sales. I, I was a professional photographer and, and I figured out pretty quickly uh, I had my own business that if I was going to survive, I had to learn how to sell, you know. So I thought if I just make great photos, people, you know, walk in the door. Or if I run some ads in the paper, well, I learned not. So that wasn't the case. So I started learning some marketing, got some ideas. And I went out and knocked on doors in commercial places and said, listen, I got an idea for you. It's for to grow your business. And I would usually look at the kind of advertising they were doing. And I'd come up with an idea and I might say, you know, you could do this so that we could take photos of people and put them, you know, so it was always using photos in this whole thing. And it worked, you know, I sold stuff like that. And at that time, it was it was easy to keep track of stuff, although, you know, my, my accountant at the time had one of the first paper punch uh, kind of uh, IBM computers. And we I played with that. So I kind of had the whole computer bug back then. Then moving on from there to 3M, it was the DMB cards and then just index cards. But then they came out with, this was the strange thing. I don't know the name of it. It was a, uh, a system, if you will. It was a metal box that was probably about five by seven. The cards were about five by seven size. And they had holes in them. And depending on, and you had a rod, <laughs> okay? And you could run this rod through these holes. So if you had those holes punched a certain way and you wanted to get all the people geolocate everyone, for instance, okay? <laughs> if I wanted to geolocate everyone in Newcastle, Pennsylvania, I could do that because I had a certain whole color that I'd run that rod through and then lift up the cards out of the box. Okay. Putting them back in, you had to put them back in by hand, which was a pain. So pretty soon what happened was, you know, you'd be in the, again, in the heat of the battle, you'd find that you had cards all over your car and, you know, all over the office and that, but it was a clever idea. Right. And then, you know, I think the first software that we ever used, I'm just even trying to think, what was it? The, uh, the contact software that everyone used that, uh, it was a basically a, a customer relationship management tool, which whose name escapes me right now. But it was it was like uh, everywhere, and this was in the seventies, going into the eighties, and then I got into the software business. So I actually, <laughs> so I actually had a software company that I okay. found, founded. So in this my software company, we were a mainframe company, so we had all kinds of databases and, and stuff that we used. So we we wrote our own stuff that we were using for years, and then. At the same time, I did have clients that, uh, that were sales and marketing clients of mine. And we started using Salesforce. You know, that was that was kind of what we used. And 
I tried to convince people, you know, I, I think, you know, we had people go through some of their trainings and some of them adopted it, but it was a slow process. It really, it really was to get people to use it. And I'd sit down with the salespeople and they'd tell me the truth, you know, they really weren't using it. So. Right. <laughs> And then from there, you know, it's easy now. I use, honestly, I use here Active Campaign as a CRM and a database. And, and they've added more onto, uh, to, it's, it's, you know, I'll put a plug in for them. They're a really good company, I think. They're just not an email marketing, you know. They've got some good tools in there now. And they've done a good job of, you know, integrating with other companies. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, I've got a lot of clients that are using it. And through that time, I've used, you know, you name it, I've probably used a lot of those different tools. So that my sales software story, I guess, <laughs> for what it's <laughs> worth, I'm probably not your typical salesperson, you know, it's so I probably was uh, lucky enough that most, you know, I had a, a, other than selling copiers, I had a pretty small defined list. Selling copiers was, you know, I had to figure it out. If I made 30 uh, calls or knocked on 30 doors, I might get one person to talk to me and, you know, yeah. I could work that backwards and I figured it out and. It worked. You know, I was, I was just, I didn't know what I didn't know back then. I didn't know anything about sales. So I just followed the instructions. I was, I was you know, <laughs> dumb enough to uh, just go ahead and do what they said to do. And it worked. And, you know, I was able to set all kinds of sales records and when I was in, with 3M, I still think I hold some there. So oh, it that's, was, it, that's it was excellent. Fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was a great, everyone should sell. Everyone should have some time selling. You know, yeah. We used to say carrying the bag, you know. Right. And, you know, kids don't, today in college, they don't all get a chance to do that. You know, I used to say in the summers, go out and knock on doors, sell knives, you know, sell, sell right. whatever, you know, cut coat knives or something. Oh, it's interesting. I actually have my degree in marketing management from Michigan State University. And they told me to get started. You're going to start in sales. I go, well, I got a marketing degree. And they're like, yes, but we want you to try sales first. So yeah. it's interesting how that works out. But uh, it's been a wonderful career. And the personal development that I think you acquire being a professional salesperson is just remarkable and wouldn't trade that for anything. Yeah. I mean, it's, it really is the heat of the crucible that can make you or break you, I guess, too. But yeah, I mean, if you do well there, you can do well on just about anything, I think. Yes. I learned to fly planes when I was pretty young and I learned to fly in a what was called tail draggers, which are planes that have a tail wheel. And it was a tail, it was a tail dragger with a stick, you know, <laughs> no, no <laughs> flaps. And the story, everyone today or years afterwards, I would tell people, you know, what I learned to fly on. And any pilot would immediately say, well, if you can fly that, you can fly anything. <laughs> and that's kind of how it right. is. And that's kind of how I always feel about sales. You know, if you can go out and knock on doors or if I dropped you off in the middle of nowhere and gave you 50 bucks and you were successful in a week, I, I would know that you could sell, you know, so. Right. So we kind of went off the, the whole thing here, but, but thank you for asking questions. So, of course. Well, Oxy, so good luck. And thank you. Again, it's V-E-L-O-X-Y dot I-O. I-O. Okay. All right. You have a great day. Thank you, Bobby, too. Thank you for being here with us today at the Water Cooler Hangout. If you'd like to learn more about the things we talked about, you can read the show notes by going to www.bobpool.com forward slash podcast. That's www.bobpoole.com forward slash podcast with an S. Take care and don't forget, listen first and sell later.